Okay, so we finally made it to the spray booth with this guy. Tons of work to get here. Everything's looking really awesome from the bottom to the top. Got all our repairs with our new trim and new wood additions down here. Um, I fit the hinges on both doors just because I was expecting a lot of work and uh, this door was a lot of work, but not the, the top one. It was in pretty good condition. So that's good. And it'll be easy to spray with them on. It's not too, too big of a deal. I can just kind of have it open that way. And uh, once we get this sprayed, we'll be able to finish up with the speakers slash dust lot there and we'll spray the back as well um, and tone that to match a little bit closer here. There's a little bit more red going on so we'll get that matched. I'm going to put a cover on this guy before we go. I made a couple of um, wedge uh, stays just to keep um, the back panel and the clock from moving apart from each other. Um, they don't really need to be there and, and sometimes there are little clips but usually not but on this one i just wanted to have something that uh, could swivel and lock it in place uh, just because the customer asked for that so that's good everything's sitting nicely and we'll be able to seal it all up get it nice and sealed with the lacquers so our little our new little foot down there it's looking real nice and our finial up top is really fitting in nicely with everything else so I'm gonna take off uh, the top piece and put it on the table in the booth and spray everything with a couple coats of lacquer and then we'll see if we need to do any color work Okay, so I've ordered a bunch of um, extra transfers here so I can steal these numbers and then they'll match the other ones that we use this for. 
Uh, we just have to use the individual numbers because the numbering is different than uh, what it is on the, the uh, minute clock. So I'm just gonna be stealing one at a time. Kind of trying to space it as good as I can. Just individual numbers. So our first number here is 31, and I don't exactly know why it's not 30, but I guess the second hand is a little bit different. Okay, so there's a pretty messy three, it's okay. And then we're gonna steal a number one, sorry you guys can't see this very well. I'll put you on this side. Steal a number one from the 10. Just try to line it up best I can. One is a little bit unproportional to the three, but it's gonna have to do. There we go. So I'll carry on. Got my 31. I'm going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And we'll angle the letters with the dial just like this one. And I'm doing that because I saw it on the W. Hodge for Muir Cook, Muir Kirk clock. So I'm just going to follow the same uh, pattern that he used on his clocks. They have them in different styles. Some of them stay upright the whole time. Some of them twist with the clock dial, but this one stays kind of and goes all the way upside down with the whole dial. So we'll go through and get those on. All right, so we've got three coats of lacquer on the case and the top. And now I'm just going to um, give it a little bit more of a worn type look, just a little softer of a, sh of a sheen. Um, a clean lacquer finish is beautiful, but when we're talking about pieces from the 1850 or 1820s, 1800s. Um, we wanna give them a little bit more of an aged luster. So I'm gonna be using the Howards and a Scotch pad. And I'm just gonna be kind of ticking that sheen down, giving it a little bit more of that old, warm, antique glow instead of new lacquer look. Cause we don't want this to really look new. We like that it's old. So I'm just gonna kind of start from the top down. And this polish will also protect the finish. Not much, just mostly wax. The only thing that wax really protects against stuff like uh, this polish or other beeswax products is um, abrasion. So if you're thinking about if something hits the clock, if it's a waxed surface, it more easily slides off rather than if it was not a waxed surface and is a little bit more grippy, you would run into it and you kind of dig into the wood. So it's just protecting that surface. It does not really protect against water, moisture, waxes and polishes may look make the, the wood look better but it doesn't protect against any of that contrary to what you might believe or maybe if what you've heard about a wax finish same thing with oil finishes not a lot of them unless you're getting into the varnish uh, side of things not a lot of them have um, a lot of protection against moisture and they need to be reapplied very often. That's why we have our film finishes that we use, which is lacquer, shellac, varnish. Those finishes um, protect the wood against moisture and seal in a bit of moisture for, from getting out of the wood as well. <clears throat> But all of the uh, penetrating finishes like oil and beeswax, 
and all that kind of stuff. They don't really do much in that department. But they look much nicer when you have, you know, a raw piece of wood that you're waxing. And it looks like it's got moisture and but that very quickly evaporates and kind of have to do it pretty often if you want to keep the, keep the properties there to protect the wood. Yeah, so I'll just work through both these pieces and then wipe them all down with a cloth and uh, we'll get, get to fitting the clock face in. All right, so had a chat with the customer and because we can see the old outline of the name, we both agreed that it was appropriate to put it back on. So I've basically traced out um, from the shadow of the old letters here and worked off of the picture of his name on a clock online. Yeah. I did have to remove the varnish on the center of the clock where the transfers are because you can't really paint over um, this um, conservation varnish. It doesn't really allow stuff to go over top. So just removed that, which is not too hard, but it did kind of mess with my transfers a little bit in the removal process. So I had to do a lot of touch-ups there and probably a few more.
There it is, finally finished. This was a fun job, but really, really challenging. It looks fantastic. So, from the top to the bottom, or the bottom to the top, where should we start? Let's start at the bottom. We've got new custom trim made. Uh, we've got a new foot. We've also put leveler feet on, just so that it makes it easy to level the clock. Uh, we rebuilt this entire base, added in oak where the woodworm had gotten to it. We rebuilt these edges. Can't see any of our little splices in. There's new oak here on the edges everywhere. We put a new ascension on, repaired the hardware, put a new lock in. Entirely new back panel, made to look like it's as old as the pieces that we had. We've got a couple of latches here to connect these two. We saved and found the label. That's intact. Moving up, we rebuilt the finial, remade that and put a structure up there to hold it. We did some glue ups on this case, uh, new fabric on the sides here for the speakers, um, repaired the hinge mounts as well on this door. We repaired the lock mechanism here so this door locks now um, without any additional hardware added. We repaired the glazing on the glass door and painted it. And then last but not least, and I'm probably forgetting a bunch of other stuff, we completely restored this beautifully painted clock face. This was a joy to do, really. Bringing these colors out. Remember, we had to find this, figure out what that was. Um, all the gold leafing and the color work. And just cleaning it was an amazing find to find all that color just come out after the cleaning of the old varnish. And we redid all of the dials with a compass and an oil marker and all the numbers, um, the two small dials which were missing, the minute and the second hand, they uh, were transfers. So those we, we pressed on. And then we did a lot of research to find out who this was made by um, after finding a really nice surprise underneath the old varnish. So we've got his name back on the face. and it's looking awesome. So thank you so much everyone for waiting for this project. And uh, it's a big one. It takes a long time to do these things and it takes a lot of resources and I have to order a lot of specialty stuff. Uh, but I really appreciate you guys tuning in and, and waiting and and watching these with excitement because I work on them with excitement and I'm so excited to share them with people who love them as much as I do. So a customer is going to get a call and I'm going to hopefully get um, his reaction in this video, maybe a next one. And uh, yeah, if you want to uh, support this channel, you can buy me a coffee. The link's in the description below. And that just helps me to continue to make all this beautiful content for you to enjoy. So thank you so much. And I hope to see you on the next video. Check out our other ones. Cheers.
Oh, Come on, on in, Jay. <laughs> I just want to get your reaction before you think. <laughs> Here it is. Looks oh. <laughs> beautiful. Man. Doesn't it have a presence? Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's so nice. Oh. <laughs> it's not going to go to the wood burning pile. No, now. not the wood burning pile now. No. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Look at it. Look at it. What strikes you first? Oh, the face, of course. Yeah. And then the case. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, from the finial. Yeah, all the details will start popping out on you because, oh. I mean, there's just so many little things that we did everywhere. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> and the name. Yeah. You even put, you even did the design around the name. Yep. Like they had it. That's the emblem they had. So yeah. we put it all back where it was. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's awesome. And the picture, man. Oh yeah, man. look at the colors, hey? Yes. It's just amazing. Oh. And, you know, this was completely missing, our little yeah. oh, Scottish what? thorn there. Oh, yeah? Yep. That, that was, was missing? Th and what else? You saw some other things. Uh, a crown? Yeah. So the lady's crown right here. We can open it up. So you've got your little lock under oh, here. Oh, yeah? Oh, I looked all over. I looked at a thousand <laughs> clocks Did you? <laughs> to find that. Yeah, so right here oh. is the English crown. That you can see oh now. yeah man just kind of just hidden before you know with all the the oh. color and so many other things and there was another thing oh this this here the yep. uh the little flower with flower. flower it's um wales yeah i forget what it is but you can i mean oh. you can just see so Turn much on. more of the thing <laughs> i've been waiting 50 years oh well my pleasure <laughs> I'm so happy you brought it to me. Oh. What do you think about the finial? I love it. Yeah? Yeah. I think it's really, you know, it's just very understated to go with the rest of the understated case. Well, yeah, you can't, you have to maintain the character. Yeah. The... Yeah. I think so. And then we got the new fabric on the sides yeah, for the I speakers. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Oh, look at it, man. <laughs> yeah, so here's the label that is on the back here. Um, Right up there that we found underneath the old backboard. Oh, right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know what it means. Yeah, it looks like a shipping it. label. I think it's a shipping number. Yeah. 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 And then we added these. Um, oh, clips. good. Good. So when you slide this back, yeah, you can just yeah. clip it in so it doesn't yeah, yeah, move yeah. around on you. Perfect. Perfect. And that board's a stop up there. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> awesome. Oh my goodness. Me and Shop Dog just want to wish you, Terry Daniels, a big happy birthday.